A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a, vi in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eleazar? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky. Count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord, the Lord took note of Sarah as he said he would. He did for her as he promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Adam a son in his old age at the set time that God had stated. Abram gave the name Isaac to this son of his, whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac's descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the laws of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you prepare in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted and you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, 
the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. This is our last weekend in December, which means, as I've been trying to do kind of a monthly theme within prayer, this will be the last time I focus on Ignatian um, imagination in prayer. So one last time, close your eyes and imagine. Close your eyes and imagine the, the temple in Jerusalem. It's a hustle and a bustle. There are many people there. Imagine it as any store at the day after Christmas. That kind of many people there for many various reasons, all kind of doing their own thing. What does it look like? There's animals in the streets. What does it smell like? How crowded are the streets? Who are you with? And from a short distance away, imagine Mary and Joseph carrying Jesus, a small infant. What does Mary look like? What does Joseph look like? It says they're there to offer a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. That's the offering a poor family would offer for their child. <clears throat> so imagine who the rich were there. What did they look like? And imagine Mary and Joseph amongst the poor. How are their clothes? What do they look like? They've been sleeping in that stable. There was no room in the inn. There's still no room. How much rest are they really getting sleeping on the hay? You see them there. And you see this man, Simeon, a minor prophet. Somebody who's there prayerfully every day. You overhear the words that he's saying about this infant. Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. My eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. Clearly, this person believes that this little infant is going to be his savior to bring salvation. What does it mean for you to witness that happening? For you to picture it happening. What's the look on Mary's face? What's the look on Joseph's face as this is said of the child Jesus? Then Simeon turns to Mary and says, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. In you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Does Mary say anything in reply to this? The scriptures do not say. Imagine in your own heart, how would Mary respond to Simeon saying these things about her son? 
What's her, what's her facial response? What words does she speak? What does she think in her own heart? How does Joseph respond to hearing this about Mary? Take a moment and picture yourself as Mary in this scenario. Go back through it again. In the shoes of Mary, the first Christian, the model of all Christians, what does it mean to be said to you about somebody you've been a mother or father to, whether biologically or spiritually? If someone sees your son, your daughter, as the one who will bring them to God. What would that mean to you? That your son or daughter would be the one to bring them to salvation. That we, they would be the one to bring you, them to Christ. You hear of the sword that will pierce the heart of Mary. You yourself a sword will pierce. Apply that to yourself. How would God want a sword to pierce your heart to be able to do his will? In this image, what is God calling you to? How is he calling you to live? How is he calling you closer to himself? Now place yourself in the role of Christ, the infant there. Though as an infant, humanly, he probably didn't understand much of what was being said, but as God, he had the ability to understand. What would it mean for this to be said of you? For someone to look at you and see you as the one who is going to bring them salvation. Every Christian is called to be like Christ, to be another Christ to others, to be the one whom people see Christ through. Would somebody say of you, my eyes have seen the salvation of God, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for his people, Israel. When is that most true of you, that you are somebody who draws others to Christ? When is, when is it furthest from the truth? It was said of Mary, behold this child, it was said to Mary, behold this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. How would you be a sign that is contradicted? Jesus was the king who was rejected by his own people, the people he came to save. The one who brought freedom not by his victory, but by his defeat on the cross, he defeated death. How are you the sign that is contradicted? How are you Christ in your daily life? To Mary, a sword was piercing her heart as she saw Christ on the cross. Who is it whose heart would be pierced 
if you embrace the suffering that God places in your life. Who is it that would be brought closer to Christ if you really did? Take a moment and just reflect and seeing all these different scenarios from this one scripture passage. Which point in this whole meditation did your heart feel closest to God? In that moment, in that point of the meditation, just simply ask, God, what do you want of me? As we celebrate the Holy Family, the family that supported Christ in his mission, what is the mission you're giving to me? And who are you surrounding me with? to support me as I seek to follow you.